Welcome back everybody, my name is Wes. I'm a magician, if you didn't already know that, and I'm here to tell you about two of the coolest characters of all time in history. One is a magician, one is a con artist. They both have something in common. Their insane amount of preparation before they do their cons or tricks. And I, they're worth putting in the same video. Absolutely fascinating, you're gonna love it. Let's start with the con artist, Titanic Thompson, one of the greatest con artists of all time. Let's start when he's 11 years old. He's 11 years old. His name's Alvin at the time, but you know, he eventually becomes Titanic. We'll just call him Titanic. Titanic's 11 years old and he's got his dog with him. He's taught his dog how to fetch. He's taught his dog how to fetch stuff from underwater. Pretty cool, right? I mean, I've seen dogs do this at the beach, right? They swim down and pick things up and come back. It, it's possible. So Titanic and his dog are hanging out by this pond one day and a dude walks by gonna do some fishing. And Titanic starts bragging about how good his dog is at fetching. Now, the guy's like, well, okay. And he's like, he can fetch things from underwater. He can fetch anything from underwater. And the guy's like, I don't really believe that, 11-year-old kid. And he's like, all right, well, I'll prove it to you. Uh, I'll, I'll bet you uh, your fishing rod that my dog can retrieve whatever I throw in there. And the guy says, you're on. So Titanic picks up a rock, marks it with an X, and lobs it into the pond. The dog goes in, swims down, comes back up, spits out the rock with the X on it. Boom, give me your damn fishing rod. What this poor sucker didn't know is that Titanic spent the entire day before throwing thousands of rocks with an X marked on them into the pond. All his dog had to do was go down and basically get any rock. Unbelievable for an 11 year old to come up with this. And they get even better. Fast forward to when he's 19 years old. He challenges the world champion horseshoe pitcher, Frank Jackson, to a game of horseshoes. Now this is the beautiful thing. He set up a horseshoe pitch at 41 feet. That's a foot longer than the standard 40 foot horseshoe pitch. And he spent months practicing at 41 feet. But I mean, Frank Jackson doesn't know that. So he of course would accept this. And Titanic's making side bets left, right, and center about this. By the time Jackson adjusted for the extra foot, Titanic already had an insane lead and had made over $2,000. Fast forward again, nobody was off limits for Titanic. Okay, he's driving down the road with a few friends in the car and they see a sign that says Joplin 20 miles. He pulls over the car and says, there's no way Joplin's 20 miles away. There's no way, I know how far it is and it's not that far, there's no chance. So he starts betting everyone in the car. Pretty soon he's lined up $500 worth of bets. Now, I mean, come on, if you're Titanic's friend and you're in a car with him, you should know never to bet this guy at anything, but I guess these were new friends. Anyways, he's got $500 worth of bets lined up and they say, all right, let's go. They line up the car with the sign and they start driving and they're all watching the odometer tick away and sure enough, it's only 15 miles. What they didn't know is that the week before, Titanic had dug up that sign and moved it five miles closer to Joplin. It, 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 it's so simple, but it's crazy because you're like, who would do that? You would not expect somebody to do that. They, why would they do that? Just to get your money, I guess. It's so beautiful. As a magician, I respect this so much because it's just such a dedication. They get better again. Here we go. One winter in Chicago, Titanic came up with his most famous scam. He was hanging around a golf course bragging about how far he could hit the ball. He said he could hit the ball over 500 yards. An impossible feat. No golfer could hit the ball over 500 yards. But he said he could. And pretty soon, he had a couple thousand dollars in action here. All these people taking his bets. He walks them out to the fifth tee. They follow him out there and he says, just so you know, I hit this ball so far, I don't think there's any way I can keep it on the fairway. And they all agree, no problem. Titanic tees up his ball, turns a full 90 degrees, and then drives the ball down onto the frozen lake that butted up against that hole. The ball is probably still skidding to a stop somewhere on the frozen lake in Chicago. Now that scam is beautiful, and it actually became so famous, it appears in the golf movie Tin Cup. If you remember Kevin Costner and Tin Cup all those years ago, they have a scene just like that where Buddy hits it down the highway. What the hell's he doing? Still going. Beautiful scene from Tin Cup, and that comes from Titanic Thompson. And if you want to go way back in time, Marlon Brando plays a character in Guys and Dolls. That character is based on Titanic Thompson. This guy was a damn legend. Now, there are so many more great stories about Titanic Thompson, but I don't want to tell them all here because I want to move on 
to another guy who's also a damn legend. This guy is one of my magician idols. His name's Max Malini. Now I'll just tell you two stories about Max Malini and you'll see why I put these two guys in the same category. Story number one, Max Malini is in a prominent tailor shop in Washington, D.C., right? He's getting some work done on his own suits or whatever, and he looks around at all the tags on the suits that are lined up to be worked on and notices the name of a prominent U.S. senator. So when he notices this, he befriends, persuades, and bribes this tailor to sew a playing card into the lining of the suit. Like, this is how far ahead he's thinking. He doesn't know when he's going to run into the senator again. All he knows is if he does, and he's wearing that jacket, there's a playing card sewn into the lining. It was months before he got to do this trick. But when he did, and he cut open the guy's lining of his suit and pulled out a playing card, that is impossible. That is legitimately magic. Now, when I was on America's Got Talent, I was backstage, and I saw Howie Mandel's wardrobe, and I thought, of Max Bellini and I took a playing card and I put it in the breast pocket of Howie Mandel's jacket. Unfortunately, when I walked on stage that day, he had chosen to wear a different jacket. But oh baby, if he'd worn that green bomber jacket, I would have been a legend. I would have been a damn legend and not just in my own mind for once. Now, easily the most famous story with Max Bellini takes place at a dinner party at an English Duke's house. Bellini sneaks into the kitchen with a live chicken whose feathers had already been removed <laughs> I mean, already the preparation for this trick is insane. And he convinces the kitchen staff to let him play this magic trick out. And what he does is he hypnotizes this chicken, right? Tucks its head under its feather, probably slipped it a little bit of a tranquilizer too to keep it still, I don't know. Puts it on the platter that they were gonna serve the roast chicken on, covers it in paste and, and stuff from the kitchen to make it look like it's roasted golden brown garnishes it with all the fixings, potatoes and vegetables and, and whatnot. So once that's all set, he heads out to join the party. He tells the kitchen staff, instead of bringing out the roast chicken you're making, bring out this instead. So Max Malini's out there doing magic and engaging in conversation, being his normal entertaining self. And out comes this chicken and gets sat right in the middle of the table. Now Max Malini doesn't rush. He never rushes. He doesn't rush when he does sleight of hand and he definitely doesn't rush when he has a trick with such elaborate preparation. So once this chicken's out there and in full display, he waits, he slow plays it, and eventually steers the story around to reincarnation and bringing people back from the dead and just trying to get on this topic of resurrection, basically. And once he gets a conversation on the topic of resurrection, he says, as a magician, he has that power. And he takes a knife and he pokes this chicken and as soon as he pokes it, the chicken wakes up and starts running all over the table. Everyone loses their mind. Many of those guests ran screaming out of the room. This is exactly the kind of preparation that you would expect only from the most insane but talented and fascinating magicians of all time. I love Max Malini, not for his treatment of chickens, but for his insane dedication to magic and blowing minds. And he died October 1942, and one of his favorite mottos was always, you'll wonder when I'm coming, you'll wonder more when I'm going. And I really think that's quite fitting for him. So there you have it, everybody. Titanic Thompson and Max Malini, two of the most dedicated in their crafts. My favorite con artist and one of my favorite magicians. See you next time.